Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about a very important uh, characteristic of the transformers, either our distribution or power transformers, which is their capability to deal with short circuit currents. As you can see here, these are some burning marks in the uh, winding of a transformer, which could be a result of a short, a short circuit. So let's talk about some background, why this is a concern for the transformers. And what are the consequences if a short circuit happens and how we ensure that the transformer will be capable of uh, basically uh, resisting the damages comes out of those short circuits. So to start with, our system is subjected to uh, forks, short circuits. Could be uh, symmetrical forks, meaning three line to ground, or not symmetrical forks like a single line to ground, line to line to ground, or line to line. So these faults happen at different positions in the power systems, okay? and you have the transformers there. So whenever there is a high, whenever there is basically a short circuit, you will be having a very very high current, and that current that goes into the system will be going through the transformer. And this current will generate inside the winding of transformer a very high electromechanical force. And the basic fundamental law here is that the force is proportional to the current and the flux, the flux coming here in, in this context, coming from the, from the current itself. So if we have extremely high current, that will generate a very high force inside the winding of the transformer. So what is the consequence of this? So this is two videos uh, done by a camera uh, mounted inside a transformer. So here in the first one, we would see uh, what are the how the, the uh, uh, current will generate those forces and what is the impact of these forces on the on the winding. So you can see here the windings basically are vibrating. Okay, why vibrating? Because this is a sinusoidal current. Okay, so the, the windings are basically moving mechanically, they are moving due to the short circuit. Now, if the transformer is not properly designed, something like this. So this is, uh, we see now a failure that had mechanical failure happens in the windings because the transformer winding is not well designed to handle such short circuit. So the question comes here, how I can ensure that my transformer can withstand a short circuit if it happens in the system? There is a test basically that we use, which is uh, the short circuit test. Now this short circuit test is different than the classical routine short circuit test that we conduct basically to uh, find the losses, the uh, cover losses, and the short circuit impedance. Uh, and that in, in that test, we apply rated current, but we apply very, very small voltage. But the short circuit here to test the ability of the transformer to handle a fault in the network, we apply the rated voltage while the transformer winding is short circuited. So that test is done as per the IEC standard 60076-5 or the IEEE standard C57.12.00. Now, as per the IEC standard, this is considered as a special test. We have three different categories of tests as per the IEC standard. We have the routine test where every single transformer has to go through these tests. We have the type tests where each design has to go through these tests. But the special tests, these are this agreement between the manufacturer and the, the client. So some clients, they may ask for that. You have to do this test. So you have to select to ensemble and you have to show to me that your transformers can withstand. Some customer may accept a certificate, a previously test uh, transformers. Some will accept certain calculation to demonstrate that the current can, the transformer can basically withstand the short circuit currents. Now, this is the only test never uh, done at the manufacturer test lab because it's very, very costly. It's a very high power, especially if you're talking about power transformers. 
Uh, usually the manufacturer, they don't have this facility. So you have to go to big labs like IREC in Canada, like Kima in Netherlands, like Chisi in Italy to do these uh, types of, uh, of tests. Now, how is the connection of the test? Now, we will have here that short circuit generator connected to uh, a transformer. Uh, and this transformer is basically the testing transformer. And here is the the transformer under test. This is the transformer under test. Now we have here the short circuit on uh, transformer, and there is a switch DS2, and we have a switch DS1 uh, that is at the generator side. Now one of those switches will be normally closed before starting the test. So uh, there is two different methods. One method that you connect the short circuit. Uh, before starting the test, and then you close DS1 uh, to generate the short circuit. The, uh, the second version, which is the more referable one, because which is the more realistic one, you energize the transformer. Uh, so DS1 will be normally closed, and this will be open, and then you close this to simulate as if the transformer is energized, and then a short circuit happens to its secondary. Now, there is CTs and DD to monitor the, the current, and the voltage uh, during the during the test. Now, how the test is performed as per the IEC standard, you basically apply a symmetrical short short uh, circuits on each phase three times. So each phase will be subjected to a single line to ground fault three times. So total of nine times for a three phase transformers as per the IEC. Double uh, IEEE, you have two asymmetrical shots plus four symmetrical shots, total of six per per phase. The last question is, how do I know if my transformer passed the test or failed the test? First of all, you have to do all the routine tests before you start the test. Why? To compare them uh, after you are doing that test, because if there is any failure in the transformer. We have seen that there will be some deformation, and this deformation will uh, impact the dielectric strength, impact the impedance of the transformer. So basically, you go and you will measure uh, those quantities after the test. During the test, you will be measuring the voltage and the current. So if there is an, any abrupt change in the voltages or in the currents, like a, a collapse of the voltage or the current, sudden collapse, then you know that uh, the, the transformer has failed the, the test. Uh, usually also we open the transformer to see what are the physical damages, because usually there is a physical damage happening inside the transformer, but you wanna see the, the, uh, how severe that uh, damage, and does this damage affect the routine uh, dielectric test, the uh, short circuit impedance or not, to decide if the transformer passed or did not pass the test. So that is the special test that is used uh, to make sure that your transformer can withstand a short circuit if it happens in the field.